my pretties, it's the Lion Queen here, and today we are going to be doing another top 10 video, and this is something I have not done before, and today we're going to do my top 10 favorite um, Christmas movies. So some of these were, you know, older ones, some of these may be just recent ones, or some of them, well, I don't think there may be any recent ones on my list, I could be wrong though, but some of the, most of these I pretty much, you know, love to watch during Christmas time, and that... Since we're going to be getting into the Christmas spirit like I've already have, I thought I'd go ahead and, you know, share you my top 10, well, favorite movies for Christmas. So, like I said, um, like I'm going to make a disclaimer, this is just only my opinion. If you see a movie uh, that I place on here that you don't like, that's fine. I respect your opinion. So, anyways, um, with that being, um said and with that being the case um let's get started number 10 we have on our list is silent night deadly night well this um christmas horror movie came out in 1984 i did a shadows and pretties um well episode on this last year so you are free to go watch this this is an r-rated movie that involves pretty much a character who happens to be a villain known as Billy Chapman who happens to be dressed up as Santa Claus where um he pretty much ends up um you know killing a bunch of people by saying they've been naughty in that it honestly was a pretty um interesting concept for a movie you know pretty much um a man disguised as Santa Claus you know pretty much kills um people which is also known as Billy Chapman. So now the, this movie is a pretty good movie from 1940 1984. It's a pretty good um slasher movie. It's got really good acting. It's got good um concept. It's a pretty good um movie for how this is. I definitely do know for a fact that Robert Brian Wilson did pretty good as Billy Chapman. So I really got to say it's a pretty good um, concept for the movie of its own self. I actually really thought it was cool for this movie. So uh, like I said, this is simply my own opinion. It's a pretty good movie from the 80s. It's a pretty good series, pretty good movie as well, especially with the concept and all that. It's amazing. But like I said, this is just my own opinion. And if you happen to disagree with me, that's perfectly fine too. So, anyways, I guess we can go, um, with this, um, next one. The Santa Claus movie that came out in 1994 starring Tim Allen. Yes, most people know that Tim Allen is also known as Buzz Lightyear in the Toy Story movies. Most of you guys remember. So, I thought today I would go ahead and, you know, include this one in this movie. So... The Santa Claus movie is a pretty good movie from 1994. It's a pretty good movie for Christmas. And it's actually got a sequel called The Santa Claus 2. Now, however, The Santa Claus 2 came out in 2002, almost 10 years after The Santa Claus movie. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to include this one in it. Because it's got one of my favorite um, actors from the Toy Story movie. Well, one of the voice actors. We all know... That, you know, Tim Allen, who is in this movie, is Buzz Lightyear in Toy Story. So most of you guys should recognize that. Basically, the movie is about um, Tim Allen, Lynn's character, Scott Calvin, an ordinary man who accidentally causes Santa to Claus to fall from the roof, his roof on Christmas Eve. So when he and his young son Charlie finish sick, sick Nick's trip, and deliveries, they go to the North Pole where Scott learns that he must become the new Santa, and convince those he loves to say that he's indeed Santa Claus. It is a really good plot, and I honestly really do enjoy how awesome this movie is. It's a really good um movie. I still thought it was nice, too, so I really gotta say, it's got really good acting, and it's a pretty good um movie. For how this one really is. So. I mean I, I really like this for Christmas movie. And I recommend you guys watch it for Christmas time too. Now I also do know for a fact that. 
Santa Claus 2 is a pretty good sequel to this movie. Santa Claus 3, it's okay for me. I'm not a crazy fan of the third movie. Although I haven't watched the third movie in a while. But yeah, I recommend watching the first Santa Claus movie. And I also recommend you watch the Santa Claus 2. So anyways, I respect your opinion if you don't like this movie. And if you like it, I respect your opinion as well. Yeah, I have to include this movie on this list, and this movie is called Elf. Now, this movie stars Will Farewell as Buddy, who happened to be, you know, an elf who is different from everybody. So, the plot of this movie is he was accidentally transported to the North Pole as a toddler and raised to adulthood among Santa's elves, but he unfortunately is unable to shake the feeling that he doesn't fit in so buddy when he is an adult travels to new york in his full elf uniform and he eventually finds out who his real father is it's a really good movie even though it came out in 2003 i still always thought this movie was pretty good it's got pretty good acting i actually do like will farewell's character i thought he was really funny in this movie and he really was he did um other movies as well, and I do know for a fact that, you know, Elf has done other, you know, the actor for Elf has done other movies, so I gotta really say, it's amazing. I recommend you watch this movie if you haven't. I'm sure everybody I have seen has said that they have watched, um, you know, this movie as a kid. So, like I said, if you don't like this movie... I respect your opinion if you don't like it. If you like this movie, that's perfectly fine too, because I respect your opinion. I give this a watch during Christmas time. It's a flat out a really awesome movie. I'm pretty sure it's been out a few times, you know, like on, you know, online. Like sometimes, um, sometimes I think, I believe on TV, you've seen it a few times. So, oh, excuse me, pardon me about that. Anyways, I think we should get on with the next, um, the next one. Well, The Nightmare Before Christmas is a Tim Burton movie. Basically, this is a movie that is pretty much a, a, um, well, it's pretty much a, um, mix between a Halloween movie and a, and a, um, Christmas movie. So basically this involves, um, Jack Skellington, who is in Halloween Town, who happens to stumble across um, Christmas Town by chance throughout this film. Most of us who have seen this movie in, you know, the 90s, 2000s, and etc. should know about, you know, this movie. And I've never met a person who's never seen this movie. I mean, it's a pretty good movie. I mean, it's a good Tim Burton movie, especially with the fact that I like the fact that Jack Skellington was dressed up as Santa Claus in the movie. I thought that was really neat, too. I haven't watched this movie in, like, ages. Like, I was a young kid when I watched this movie. It's a pretty good movie, though. I did hear rumors saying that there may be a, make it a sequel to this movie, but I don't really know if that's ever going to happen. I think it's been rumored. But, I mean, it's a mix between a... Christmas movie and a Halloween movie, so I could definitely state that now. <laughs> this one is definitely on my list because it's a really great movie. I enjoy it, so yeah. If you don't like this movie, I respect your opinion, but if you like this movie, that's cool too. So let's get on with the next, next movie on my list. The Polar Express, I just have to include this movie in because, well... This story is about a young boy who is to come in an age, coming to an age where he, you know, does not believe that Santa exists. However, though, a magical train is destined to bring kids to the North Pole so they can see, you know, that, you know, Santa's real and all that. This movie is pretty good because it's got Tom Hanks. And we all know Tom Hanks also plays um, a character, Woody, from Toy Story. He is the conductor of this movie. I actually loved watching this movie when I was a kid. And this movie is based on the storybook, which I thought that was really neat. So with that being said, when I watched this as a kid, 
I honestly love this movie. It's a fun movie. It's got a really good um, concept for how it would go out. It's a pretty good, um, well-made um, storyline. The animation's pretty good in that. Especially for a movie that came out in 2004. It's amazing. So I really recommend you guys take a look at this one if you haven't. So, like I said, if you don't like this movie, I respect your opinion. If you like this movie, I also respect your opinion. So, I guess with that being said, I think we should go on with the next, um, on my list. The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. No, not the 2018 movie, but I'm talking about the 2000 movie. The one with Jim Carrey, which most of you guys know which one I'm talking about. I love the one with Jim Carrey, who plays a really good job as the Grinch. So, pretty much this movie, for any of you, for most of you guys who know what the... 2000 version of it, or aka the live action Grinch movie, it's pretty much following the plot line from How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the Dr. Seuss one, one, which I know for a fact of this movie. So, this is a live action adaptation of The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, which I honestly really loved the movie. So, Basically, this is involving, you know, the Grinch who does not like Christmas and, you know, he just wants to stop Christmas from coming and that. However, though, he eventually learns, you know, to give in and like the holiday of Christmas and all that once he, you know, gets more from Cindy Lou, who happens to be one of the Who's from, well, from Whoville. It's a really awesome movie. I do find it to be really really awesome that Jim Carrey was in this movie. So I gotta really say that this movie um, is a really well-made film. Even though it's, you know, <laughs> 22 years old, it's still a really fun movie. And I recommend reading this movie, watching this movie if you haven't. It's, it's a really well-made um, storyline for this movie. So, I guess with that being the case and with that being said, I'm going to say this, that this is just my opinion on this movie. If you don't like this movie, I respect your opinion. And if you like it, that's fine too. So, anyways, I think we should move on to our next on our list. Muppet Christmas Carol. This is pretty much a really great movie that involves um, a adaptation and an adaptation uh, a Muppet adaptation of um, the 1843 novel called The Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Now this stars as Michael Caine as Ebenezer Scrooge as well as alongside Muppet perform Muppet characters like Kermit, Miss Piggy, Gonzo, Fozzie, and etc. A lot of kids from the 90s and even early 2000s have seen this pretty much every Christmas, and I have as well. I honestly really like a lot of Muppet movies, and I may do a top 10 favorite Muppet movie fees of all time, like my favorite ones. But when it comes to this Christmas movie, there's something magical about this movie. It's like the concept of it. It was the very first um, Muppets film to be produced by Walt Disney Pictures whose parent company would acquire the Muppets franchise later on in 2004. Pretty much the Muppet Christmas Carol follows the Dickens' original story closely. However, there was some stuff, I believe, that was not included in this movie that the book inquired. I'm not really too sure because I have not read the novel, but I have watched this movie when I was younger, and it was a really, really well-made film for what this movie is. So, anyways, I really do thought that the characters were pretty good for what the movie is, especially with the, you know, the songs were good in this. I honestly really love this Muppets adaptation of this, um, you know, story based on the Christmas Carol. I mean, I really like the um, Muppet Treasure Island story, which basically is like the their adaptation of the Treasure Island story, which I, which I do plan to maybe include that in my top ten favorite Muppet Christmas Car 
well, Chris Muppet movies or something. I don't really know exactly because there's so many um, Christmas movies I want to include on my list, but I don't want to include every single one. I'll, well, not in this video, but I might do a part two maybe in the future or something. But it really depends on if I ever get the opportunity. Can't really guarantee or anything. But like I said, I mean, I just got to include this movie. It's a really good um, movie ever since I was a kid. So anyways, let's move on. Home Alone is obviously one of my favorite Christmas movies that has McCallie Culkin, who happens to play Kevin in this movie. But he was also playing as Kevin in Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. So yeah, I basically have to put the first two Home Alone movies in this spot because obviously I love the first Home Alone movie. It came out in 1990 and it's a really good movie. But I also like Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, which I thought it was a really great sequel to the first movie. So, basically, this story in the first movie involves Kevin, who is 8 years old, and he acts out the night before the family goes on a trip to Paris, which happens that his mother makes him sleep in the attic. So, eventually, Kevin gets left behind by them, so he happens to be home alone. However, there are two wet bandits known as Harry and Marv, who happen to be played none other than Joe Pesci, who is who is Harry. He was a he was pretty good in other movies too. But we also have the actor for Marv, who happened to be played by none other than Daniel Stern. So yeah, so when Kevin gets left home alone, uh, the two bandits, Harry and Marv, try to break into um, his house, which, of course, that this is the one most people know that, you know, Kevin sets up traps all over the place, and then everyone tries to go in, and they get, you know, hurt and all. <laughs> it's a pretty great movie. I mean, I recommend you watch the first movie. In Home Alone 2, it came out two years after the first one. It's also known as... Lost in New York. It's a really awesome sequel to the first one. And I honestly really praise for a, it for a really good sequel to the first movie. So basically this involves um, Kevin and his family go on the trip to um, Florida to celebrate Christmas. However, though, Calvin or Kevin, sorry, I don't know why I put, pronounce this Calvin, but... Kevin, unfortunately, gets on the wrong airplane, and he heads to um, New York City instead of Florida. So while he's in New York City, he's basically, I think, like in a, I think he stays, like, at a hotel or something, and he happens to be, you know, stalked again by Harry and Marv, who have somehow escaped from prison from the first movie, and they happen to, um, you know, follow him into New York, and... Basically, the plot's kind of similar to the first one, except it just has a different aspect. It has Kevin in New York instead of being left home alone. Kevin gets, you know, on the wrong plane, and he goes to New York. It's a really awesome sequel to the first movie, and I recommend watching the second movie if you haven't. I mean, I'm pretty sure every pe everyone I have known have watched at least the first two movies as a kid. Now, I will not be including Home Alone Free or the other Home Alone movies because, as I'm going to be brutally fair, the third movie, as well as the other movies, are not that great. The other Home Alone movies are not good. The only ones I liked are the first one and the second Home Alone movie because I know for a fact that Home Alone 1 and 2 are the best um, movies that I loved of Home Alone because they're really great, they're awesome. I really do enjoy the concept and all. It's just a really great movie. And I recommend anybody who wants to go check this movie out, you are feel free to do so. Because I gotta really say, it's a really great um, movie for what, for, you know, this movie. Especially um, for those who like this movie from the 90s. I'm sure everyone has seen it when they were kids on VHS and possibly on... TV too when TV plays you know this movie so anyways let's get on with the next one on our list Christmas Eve on Sesame Street is happened to be 
my favorite childhood um, special of Sesame Street. Like, I'm surprised that Sesame Street is still going on to this day. Like, I'm still surprised that they're still making episodes and, you know, all that. Because Sesame Street back then, like, you know, I think the 70s and 80s and 90s and et cetera were pretty good. Like, the old Sesame Street times are good. However, though, I do wish that Sesame Street would have ended, you know, I guess maybe in 2010 or something. But I gotta say, this is actually one of my favorite specials of Sesame Street because this is a pretty good Sesame Street special. Even though this one came out in 1978, it has been shown on TV and I used to have this on VHS when I was a kid. And I used to watch this every Christmas. It was... Uh, it's a very good Christmas special, even though it's, you know, by Sesame Street. So it's basically, it was basically a first Christmas special to ever be broadcasted on PBS on Sunday of December 3rd of 1978, which is quite amazing, actually, because, you know, this was the very first Sesame Street Christmas special they've ever done. So... I did a Shadows and Pretties episode on this where I talked about it. So you guys can go watch it if you like to. So anyways, this basically the whole plot of this is about... Um, the main story is basically um, Big Bird is confused whatever Santa Claus can actually get down chimneys to deliver presents or not. So yeah, basically that's um, what Big Bird's question is throughout the movie and he's trying to figure that out. You know, how Santa can get down the chimneys and deliver presents and that. Which we all kids know about, you know, how Santa does that. You know, everyone knows about how Santa does now. So, anyways, with that being the case, and with that being said, I recommend giving this Sesame Street special a watch if you haven't. It's a pretty good special. I haven't watched this, you know, you know special in years, but... You know, when I was a kid, I remembered watching this when I was younger, and I still thought this was pretty enjoyable, and it's a really good special. I really do like it. It's got, you know, characters from the Muppets, like, um, so, well, Sesame Street characters like Big Bird, um, Cookie Monster, and et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, um, yeah, I respect your opinion if you like this special or not, because, I respect your opinion if you like it or not. So anyways, I recommend you guys go check out this um, special if you haven't. There is um, full clips, full movies of it on YouTube, so you guys can go watch this one as well. So anyways, let's get on with the top favorite, most favorite Christmas movie of all time on my list. Yep. Rudolph the Red Nose Ranger, the movie. Most of you guys probably know by now, but although if some of you guys don't know by now or whatever, well, Rudolph the Red Nose Ranger, the movie came out in two, 1998. I'm not talking about the Rankin Bass one. I'm talking about this movie that came out in 1998. I love this movie because, funny enough, I do have the VHS tape of this movie. Ever since I was a kid, I ha I always love this movie as a young kid and I always do find it to be really enjoyable well made and just a pretty good movie so basically the plot is if it goes as Rudolph is born with a red nose and in this film however all the other reindeer you know make fun of him for his nose being red and you know he runs away but eventually he come across some pretty various obstacles on his way in this movie. So, of course, in this movie, we do have um, John Goodman, who most of you guys know he voices Sully in Monsters, Inc. He's in this movie playing as Santa Claus. We also have um, Whoopi Goldberg, who plays the villain, also known as Stormella, who is in this movie. We also do have um, Bob Newhart, who... Art, who is um, Leonard, the, the polar bear. Um, we do also have Debbie Reynolds, who, a.k.a. Carrie Fisher's mother, who is Mrs. Claus in this um, movie. And we also have Eric Idle, who plays as, well, Slyly the Fox in this movie. It's got really good animation. It's got good music. 
The animation is pretty good. When I first watched this movie, I honestly loved this um, movie a lot better than the Rankin Boss one. I think it's obvious because I like the rank. I like. I do like the Rankin Boss one, but I like this one a lot more. And most of you guys can understand, you know, why I like this one more. I did a review on it in Shadows and Pretties um, two years ago, I believe. So, yeah. For those of you who have not seen it, I recommend you go watch it. I do have a playlist of Shadows and Praise where I did talk about a couple Christmas movies in it, so you guys can watch this one as well. So I hope you do enjoy this um, video where I state my top 10 favorite Christmas movies. I might do a part 2 of this, this but that's going to depend on if I have time or not, or whenever I do have the opportunity to do so. But... Like I'm going to say now, um, if your Christmas movie that is your favorite is not on this list, I do apologize for that. Because I do plan to maybe make a, a second part of it where I talk about another top 10 favorite Christmas movies or whatever. But like I said, that's depending on if I ever do decide to do a part 2 of it. But yeah. Anyways, I really do hope you enjoy my picks. If, if you... Like I'm going to say, of, eh, it's just my own opinion on these movies. And if you disagree with me, that's perfectly fine too. I respect your opinion regardless. If you like any of the movies on the list, that's cool. If not, that's fine. Because I completely understand. So I guess with that being the case, and with that being said, I'm going to be sitting there and saying this right now. That, you know, feel free to state your thoughts and opinions on the movies that I've listed in this video in the comments because I like to personally hear what you guys think so anyways um with that being the case and with that being said with that be I'm gonna sit here and say this right now that this is simply my own personal opinion and if you happen to disagree with me that's perfectly fine too we're all entitled to our own opinions in regards to these creepy pastas and this is just simply my own personal thoughts so with that being said uh yeah, I'm the Lion Queen. I want to thank you so much for watching today's episode. Um, and if you happen to be brand new here on this channel, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications if you're new. I'm the Lion Queen. And as always, I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace out. And roll the outro because I'm out.